there are few more prehistoric looking creatures swimming in the ocean than the sea turtle. It has a head like a dinosaur, a beak like a parrot, and looks like a tortoise with flippers. Many animals survive as predators, relying on sharp teeth and claws to catch their prey. But turtles and tortoises have a different approach. They've evolved nature's ultimate defense strategy. The armor-plated shell has kept them safe for over 200 million years. In most sea turtles, the lower shell is made up of nine bones, which are fused together to form a solid plate. But in the leatherback, these bones are reduced to a ring around the edge. Filling in is this layer of fat, which not only covers the belly, but encircles the entire body. But what's it for? Leatherbacks are really, really unusual in that they are able to maintain a warmer body temperature than the environment. It's generating heat through its muscle action, and that core of heat is basically being trapped to a certain extent by this, this blubber layer. So by having a big blubber layer, it's like wearing its own winter jacket. Even though we think of it as a cold-blooded reptile, it's actually not cold inside. No. It's maintaining heat inside. That is essential if you're going up to the waters off of Portugal or, or Africa, some of those waters are quite cold, but they're very rich, it's a good place to feed. And if you're a reptile that's got to feed there, you've got to maintain enough body temperature to function. Protected by their thermal shield of fat, leatherbacks have been able to conquer the oceans. Leaving Florida's sunny beaches behind, they swim right across the Atlantic to our British shores, where they come to feed on jellyfish, which flourish in our cool seas. In fact, the largest leatherback ever known was found in these waters. This giant, caught on a fishing line off the coast of Wales in 1988, was thought to be 100 years old and weighed almost a ton. Being big, is another way these turtles deal with the cold. Reptiles are traditionally described as cold-blooded, but that's rather misleading. Uh, they're not so good at regulating their temperature as mammals and birds are. Lizards do it by moving into the sun to get warm, moving out of the sun to get cool. Now, a large animal, and this probably includes large reptiles like, like dinosaurs and indeed leatherback turtles, large animals can retain heat because the surface area of the body is relatively small compared to the volume of the body. And leatherback turtles really could be called almost warm-blooded. But leatherbacks are by no means the largest turtles to have ever existed. That record belongs to this extinct relative, Archelon, who was three times bigger and roamed the seas 70 million years ago. However big they get, all turtles start off tiny. After seeing the female lay her eggs the other night, I've come to Florida's Gulf Coast to find out about the next stage getting out to sea alive. Hey. Eve. Hey, how are you, Simon? Not bad. Do you hand there? Oh, absolutely. Here. I've joined Eve Haverfield, a conservationist who dedicates her life to saving sea turtles. Every morning, she digs up nests that have hatched and counts how many baby turtles made it out. First, she shows me some of the dangers they face whilst they're still in the egg. Those little reddish things are fire ants and they hurt and they can decimate an entire nest of hatchlings. And that's that hole, is that a crab? Yes. So this, this nest has not had it easy? It has not had it easy. We may not either <laughs> if this crab is still in here. Yeah, it could be right. carnage in here. So are these crabs going to go for us? They could. If you, if you stick your, go ahead and stick your finger in there, Simon. <laughs> they could. You could end up with a crab on your on your finger. It doesn't really hurt, it's just more surprising. Yeah, I'd rather not be surprised though. I know. Ah! 
<laughs> Can I go on the tonight? Are you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... uh, oh, do apologise. That gave me a fright as well, actually, just seeing that thing. <laughs> it just, as I said, the element of surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Even before they hatch, the attrition rate is high. Actually, I've got quite a few here. Oh, no, that's, that's bad news as well. These are unhatched, oh. and this one, yeah, that looks just there. That's been attacked by fire ants. Some hatchings got out, but I'm not surprised that we're going to be seeing some abnormal, abnormal eggs. Oh, shoot. We had a storm here at the, in, at the beginning of August. These little guys apparently had already hatched out of the egg, but not out of the nest. And obviously they drowned. They cannot tolerate, you know, an extended time period underwater. This is so sad. This is not good. But you know, this is nature. I can accept this. I don't like it, but I can accept this more easily than I can something that is done by humans. This is nature. This is part of, this has happened throughout the eons. Getting out of the nest alive is just the start. A hazardous race to the sea lies ahead. Natural selection ensures only the hatchlings with the best adapted genes survive running this gauntlet. One by one, they're picked off. And just when they think they've reached safety, the ocean's many predators attack. It's thought that only a quarter of the hatchlings will see past their first day. Where they go next is still a mystery. Young turtles are rarely seen. Scientists call this part of their life cycle the lost years a time when they find food to grow big enough to fend for themselves. <laughs> 